If there's one thing most Mario games are knocked for, it's the lack of creativity and world themes. They recycle these things more than they stereotype blue-collar Italians, and it's such a shame because a lot of these entries have these glimpses of something spectacular that the rest of the game just pales in comparison to. Today though, we're talking about those exceptions. Here's eight Super Mario levels whose concepts are so innovative and fun that they really should have spawned their own games. Toy Time Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy. In a game with limitless, universe-encapsulating potential, the most engrossing theme comes from something all too close to home. Toys. When I was a kid, climbing up that giant robot and dismantling it bit by bit was f***ing epic. And while the Spring Mushroom is probably the worst power-up in Mario history, it didn't matter. This one always stuck out to me in a game overflowing with personality. So imagine a game that dives into this concept deeper, exploring the potential all different types of toys bring to the table. World themes could take inspiration from different tropes. Building blocks, robots, army toys and G.I. Joes, girly-ass dollhouses, trains, dinosaurs, arts and crafts, race cars. The possibility Abilities are really endless. And what better company than Nintendo to try this? In the 60s and 70s, before they made any video games, they were primarily a toy company. And even present day, that type of merchandising is lucrative as hell for them through different World of Nintendo toys, plushies, Lego Mario sets, and Amiibo. They could pull so much from their own history and make dozens of clever callbacks and references that also serve as wildly unique stage elements and items that we really haven't seen before. Please, Nintendo. The Wraparound Stage, Various 2D Marios. You remember those levels where walking off one side of the screen brings you over to the other? Apparently that's called a Wraparound Stage, and from the small bit of it we've seen over the years, it's shown a ton of great things that I am certain would make for an incredible main gimmick. This series pioneered the 2D platforming side-scroller, so why not put that entire formula on its head and do a full vertical scrolling platformer? Would it be difficult? 100%. But what else can 2D Mario really do at this point? Wonder did just about everything it possibly could to feel unique, and probably exhausted most of their ideas, and the Maker games covered their entire backlog with infinite level possibilities. So to make a truly innovative new game, they'll have to shake up the fundamentals of Mario, and I can't think of a better way than this. Mount Must Rush, Super Mario 3D World. This level was a really fun nod to the Mario Kart series. The plethora of boost panels and linear raceways brought over the feeling from the games, I mean, about as well as you could in a platformer. But I'm not really focused on the structure of this one. Instead, the idea of Mario Kart tracks becoming actual Mario levels. This is one I've thought about for years now, because Mario Kart 8 has some of the best and most interesting environments in the entire series, and I want to explore them. I don't care if it's in linear levels like this or these big open worlds, just take all the fan favorite tracks from each entry and base real levels off of them. There's so many track themings that we've never seen anything like in Mario platformers, so instead of feeling pressure to think up all new world ideas, or reverting to all reliable grass, lava, water, and snow, pull from these other games you've made. They're practically begging for it. Painted Swampland, New Super Mario Bros. U, the level everyone points to when you call this series generic. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't change that. But as a standalone stage, yeah, it is pretty unique. But I don't want to see an entire game of this Van Gogh Starry Night style. Rather, one that incorporates a bunch of different art styles, old and new. Imagine World 1 looks like a vintage cartoon like Cuphead, World 2 incorporates cubism and has blocky, jagged platforms everywhere, then by World 8 you're in these surrealist, trippy castles and ghost houses. I don't know how a plot could support something like that, but story doesn't matter in these games. Bowser can just kidnap something, and these war pipes will take you anywhere. That's part of what makes this series so awesome. They've never been restricted by story, or really anything. Mario can be in a jolly, grassy plain, or in the quiet depths of space, and it somehow feels right, and there's not many characters that versatile. Take advantage of that, expand on these famous classic art styles, and make an entry so visually unique that people have to check it out. Tiny Huge Island, Super Mario 64. There's a recurring theme in this series of Big World Small Mario, but this one from Mario 64 is undoubtedly the best executed, because it lets you switch the proportions by going through a tunnel or entering a different painting. It's such a fresh concept that makes you look at the stage from all different perspectives, and a game full of levels like this would be such a treat. Each level could start you off as regular Mario, and at a certain point you can choose to either use a Mega Mushroom or a Mini Mushroom, and that choice determines the way you tackle the rest of 
of the level. You could take a mini mushroom and explore crevices and hidden areas you previously couldn't, or you could go mega and plow through a completely different set of obstacles. Or they could be used in conjunction to solve puzzles and whatnot. For an open world exploration based game, a gimmick like this would be freaking awesome. You'd see all these paths you couldn't take until you find the right mushroom, and going back to uncover all these mysteries once you did would be very satisfying. Call it Super Mario Size Matters, but please don't make it anything like that game. Please. <laughs> Chocolate Island 2, Super Mario World. This is one of the most complex levels in the Mario series, with three different elements that affect how the stage plays out. It's split into four areas, the first of which is always the same, the second is determined by how many coins you collect, the third by how much time's left on the timer, and the fourth by how many dragon coins you've collected. That's complicated as hell, but the concept of these unknown indicators changing the way a level is structured is just so cool to me. It makes no two casual playthroughs the same, and while sure, these levels are so well designed that Nintendo wants players to enjoy them to their entirety, I get that, but it would spike the replay value a ton. In this instance though, it's kind of annoying, because if you don't know what's causing everything, you just can't find the next level in a lot of cases. And it's understandably frustrating, especially pre-internet. But if each path still led to progression, maybe without a collectible or two, it'd be great. Metro Kingdom, Super Mario Odyssey. Wait, didn't this game spawn from New Donk City? I wish, it's such an amazing Mario stage. And this game's full of them, don't get me wrong, but it gave me a taste of exploring a full-on city with Mario's versatile moveset and I freaking loved it, but was left wanting so much more. Honestly, this place is kind of a tease. It's got this sprawling metropolis in the background, but the area we can actually maneuver through is pretty small. Also, all the city tracks coming to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe show that this guy's been itching to go to big cities for a while. So I think it's finally time we let him loose in a full-scale one. Imagine a Spider-Man-sized city that takes inspiration from all the places he's visited and toured, taking the best and most iconic landmarks from all over the world and combining them into one obstacle-heavy map. It'd be far more engaging to explore than a one-to-one -one recreation of New York City, and I'd be down for it. The Odyssey moveset is the most fluid 3D moveset Mario's ever had, so if they were to do a sequel type thing to that game, making it a melting pot city of cultures worldwide makes sense for a successor to the globetrotting 3D Mario. Also, Bowser's Fury seems like it was a test demo for Mario's next phase of 3D games, being one giant world with smaller subsectors with their own set of objectives, and what better environment for that than a huge urban area? I don't know, I'm rambling at this point, but I think there's a huge opportunity here that I'd be upset to see never fully realized. Pinna Park, Super Mario Sunshine. For the last entry on this list, I had to include a level from Sunshine. Its environment building is flawless, and it honestly takes the idea of a beach world to the absolute max, and there's not any tropical themed levels in this game that need any expanding. However, building a level around an amusement park is so intrinsically fun, and in spite of that, this level really underdelivers. The Mecha Bowser fight is pretty unique, and the cutscene just before that is one of the biggest what moments from my childhood, but the rest of this stage is kind of mid. A handful of missions take place outside the park itself, and the ones that are inside of it don't really take advantage of that. Stand in the empty spot on the Yoshi Go Round, climb up the back of this structure with a camera from 2002, that'll be fun! With all Nintendo's interest in theme parks recently, it'd be a great time to not only include sections from their own park, but also to expand on other roller coaster and theme park tropes in some good old-fashioned Mario stages. But there you have it, eight levels from past Mario games that really should have spawned their own full-fledged adventures. If you have strong feelings on any of these, or some ideas of your own, please share them down below. I'd love to hear some of your creativity, and I really try to respond to as many comments as I can. If you enjoy Mario videos like the one you just wrapped up, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. This channel posts Mario content every Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern, and you won't want to miss anything. In the meantime, check out this video, where I test your Mario knowledge and give you one fact you didn't know about every mainline Mario game. Thank you so much for watching, and please have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you next week. Wait, there was a new super level and not a single one from Wonder? What the f-